for this process, we have a very simple service task in the beginning where I will read the new forum posts that people have opened in our commander forum. <clears throat> I will use that number uh, to uh, go into a DMN to determine if there are too many new posts and uh, somebody has to go into the forum and actually answer them so people get a fast response. So that's my process. And for the first step for the service task, I will uh, hand over this to Automation Anywhere. And in here, I have prepared a little bot that is opening the forum page in a browser using a little JavaScript to fetch a certain element in the DOM and uh, read then a number from that element. And if I head over to the forum, you will see that there's a new button here, which can, if you're logged in, show the new post and it shows the 16. And I'm trying to um, get the 16 out of this website using the RPA bot. So this is what I want to do. And to uh, prepare my bot, uh, we have in Kavimo the catalog. So let's just create a new catalog entry. We have uh, service task templates that we can use. And uh, let's say new forum posts is my template name. And I have prepared already here, the browser's nice. So this will be my service task label. We have different types of templates that we can actually use the generic external task te uh, templates where you have an open topic. And in this case, I'm going to use automation anywhere. The bot is called webinar demo. Uh, so that's the, the name that you can get from automation anywhere. And um, it has one output parameter. And uh, let me quickly show you that output parameter. So uh, in automation anywhere, you have these variables. And um, if I inspect that, you can see here that this variable is used as an output. So this is how you can then connect and fetch data or bring data into the uh, RPA bot. Um, so we have this variable called new forum post. So let me just specify that in here as well. Now my template is already done and I can publish this. Simply going here, I'm not giving it a version name. That's not necessary for the demo. That's fine for now. The next step I will do is I have prepared this process model already in Commander Modeler, so I'll open that. And as you can see, the modeler has synced the template already. So all I have to do now is select the service task, open the catalog, and uh, create, use my template here. Apply this, and now you can see in the um, properties panel that um, we have the output parameter already prepared. Um, I also have then the DMN task already predefined. So let me quickly open the DMN file. And as you can see, it's a simple table. If we have more than 15 forum posts, then it says is above threshold. Otherwise, it would be below. So this is my DMN file. This is my BPMN file. All I have to do now is use the new deployment feature to also add the DMN file alongside BPMN. So you can deploy multiple files at a time. It can even be a script if you have an external script that you use here. And I can simply deploy that. It's deployed. Let's trigger a new instance and we can open common the cockpit to see that uh, this process instance is now waiting at the service task. So the next step will be that <clears throat> Automation Anywhere is supposed to pick this up. And for this, we have the RPA bridge that I have prepared down here in the terminal window. It's a simple Java jar that you can execute. So let's spin this up. And then this will fetch the task, propagate it to Automation Anywhere. And this takes a little while. While we are waiting here, Volker, maybe you can um, explain what is this bridge and why do we need it? What is it basically doing? So the bridge is basically an external task client that we have developed. So it uses the same pattern that you know from your uh, other external task clients. And it um, has then a connection to the Automation Anywhere API or to the UiPath API. So depending on which RPA vendor I'm using, it's mm -hmm. pretty easy to set these up. Right, so it basically connects Comwinda to Automation Anywhere. It creates the bridge between those two, hence, hence the exactly. name. Um, and um, you, you mentioned the term external task. Torben, maybe you can quickly explain um, for those of our listeners who are not familiar with the external task pattern in Comwinda, what is that and, and why is it interesting in this context? You can think of an external task like um, a work item for a service worker in a process. So when the process engine reaches that point, it stops execution until a worker that can run on a different system, for example, completes that work. 
And now the RPA bridge that we are using here subscribes to these kind of activities um, because it does the work in the RPA system and eventually it returns to common and says, I have now completed the task because for example, the bot has finished and then the common law process engine continues execution. This makes sense. And Volker, we are, we are waiting here currently for um, automation anywhere now to pick this work up. Now we can see something happening. Maybe you can explain to us what's happening now. Yeah, so now automation anywhere, this, this uh, Windows machine received the task to start this bot. Mm -hmm. It opened the website and it will now fetch uh, using the mm -hmm. JavaScript this number 16 and return it to Kamunda. Mm -hmm. Why this, did this take so long now? Um, that's uh, something with automation anywhere. As you can see mm -hmm. in the bottom, so the RPA bridge was pretty quick in locking the external task. So, so mm -hmm. on our side, it was pretty quick, but then the connection to automation anywhere, I don't know exactly how technically they have the Windows machine connected to the orchestration service from them. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, but now we are done. So the external task was marked as completed. So let's go back to cockpit and take a look. And as you can see in cockpit, this process instance was moved forward. As I said, we have 16 open posts. So the DMN said it's above threshold. And uh, I guess I will assign this to nine later on. Um, however, um, what also can happen with RPA bots is that uh, things can fail. And in the new release, we have a new mechanism. So if you have watched the 714 release webinar in October, you might have seen that we can handle these cases by opening incidents in common cockpit. But now let me log out of the forum and show you the new way how we can also handle this. So now you see that the button is gone, so the JavaScript will fail. And um, what I will do is I will enhance the template by a BPM and error definition. And this BPM and error definition works in this way that we have an expression that is evaluated after the task is completed or if something fails. And if this evaluates to true, so this is a generic catch-all if uh, the RPA bot failed with an error, then do something. And uh, let me just quickly add uh, name and code. And now we can publish this template to catch BPM and errors in a certain way. And if I go back to the Kamuna modeler, um, I can just resync the templates very quickly. Here we are. And if I now show the service task again, it shows like, oh, there's a new version of the template available. If I want, I can update this, but let's do this. And now you can see in here, the BPM and error definition that is coming from the template. And this gives me an indication that, okay, this service task might throw the error. So let's catch it. Let's add a boundary event, error boundary event. Let's uh, <clears throat> use the pre-configured error, error object. And uh, let's add, let's say uh, we, we use a user task to enter new forum posts manually. And let's bring this back into the process flow like this. So if I now save this file and um, run this again, then we can see that uh, this BPM error will be catching the technical error in the RPA bot. Right, and now we are waiting again for automation anyway to execute this. Um, Volker, maybe you can say a few words about you use the templates now in Kobimo. Um, do, we, do I have to use the templates um, if I want to use the RPA bridge? Um, um, and if I don't have to use the templates, what, what is basically the problem that these templates are solving for me as a user? So you don't have to use the templates. You can also configure everything manually. Um, as you know, in the properties panel, we have extension properties, we have external task topics. So you can also uh, do all of this without the use of templates. However, if you do so, then the people that maintain the bot scripts can create this catalog and then other people have, uh, can tap into the catalog and reuse the existing RPA bots in their processes. Mm -hmm. And that uh, makes the process modeling and automation of RPA bots a lot easier. So it's about reuse. So I basically declare my, um, in this case, RPA bot in the catalog, and then I can reuse it um, in multiple processes. Um, and now we see the execution happening here in the background. So I can reuse it in multiple processes. And we saw in Kawimo that this is not only about RPA bots, I can also um, create a general purpose um, service task um, and template that. And this way I could write reusable workers 
that I then basically template um, and make available through the catalog um, in, in many processes for reuse. So that's quite interesting. Exactly. So the, the catalog is actually pretty flexible. So you don't have to be in the RPA use case to b benefit from it, um, but you can use any template. And it, uh, we have, an, you might have heard of the element templates that the modeler team has prepared and you have the full power behind that if you want to use it. So now we see that uh, there was an error reported from Automation Anywhere. So let's take a look at this, uh, how it looks like. So now we are pending at this user task here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have seen how we can handle in a prepared way uh, um, how failures in RPA bots can, can work. Um, this can also be used if you, are, uh, if you have a business error and you want to determine this based on the output of the RPA bot and then not continue the regular flow, but go into the BPM and error flow. Okay, let me just, uh, I don't need this process instance anymore. So let's just kill this and let me move on in the demo to um, open Optimize really quickly here. And then I can show you what we have uh, new in Optimize. I have already prepared here a dashboard with the same process. So you can see uh, here the heat map where we ran a couple of process instances going through this process. And um, I also prepared something else. So I can now import a JSON that was previously exported. And this is the definition of a report. So you can see now a process instance count report. I can open that. And you can see this line chart here that I had prepared beforehand. So it's very easy to export and import certain report definitions. If, for example, you have a staging and production environment, you want to bring one for, to the other. What I can also do here is we have a new um, report builder interface. And um, I want to use this to show you a couple of things. So let's add a, um, a distinction for this uh, path to say, I only want to see the process instances that went through this manual flow down here. So I add this quick filter. And I do another thing. I want not just to see the count, but I also want to see the duration. So we can also in this one report add multiple metrics right now. So let's give this a name, manual case, save this. And then um, we can go back to this overview and say, okay, we also want to have a similar report for um, let's say RPA only where uh, we cover the other case. So let's just adjust this. Uh, it's very easy to edit. So we can go here if it's completed or we can say not executed. So not executed would mean everything that goes above. And updating the filter, saving the report. And now I will add these two reports to the dashboard for easy comparison. So let's first take the RPA only, maybe make it get a bit bigger here, and then also add the manual case report right next to it. And then you can already see in here that it's pretty easy to compare these reports in a dashboard and including the metrics. For example, what you can see is that in the RPA case, if everything goes fine, it's pretty short, it's below one minute. But if manual people are involved, then it takes a couple of minutes. So this is how you can easily compare these reports using Optimize. And going on in the demo, we also saw that we have a DMN file that we used. And uh, Daniel mentioned before that we can also use DMN in Kabimo now. So let me just import the DMN here, add it to the regular project that I already have so we can have the same access rights configurations of the project. We see the same DMN from before. We can create milestones and we can, for example, go into the table. And another thing, another topic that we worked on was the usability of DMN tables, especially. So if you have a large table, now it easily scrolls and the, the header is sticky. So it's easy to navigate large tables and still know where you are. And for example, if I open the milestone view, it's easy to see the two, uh, two versions in here and really quick compare them. So this is what we did with DMN in Kavimo. And now let me come back to one topic that is really exciting, um, which is forms. You have seen that I didn't add a form for this user task before. So let me add this. We don't need RPA for this case anymore. So let me just remove a couple of things and reconnect it. So this is how 
easy, you can refactor your process. And what I want to do is I want to have a form where I can enter this number manually. And with the new modeler, what we can do is we can create a new form inside the modeler where I can simply drag a text field. I can say um, new forum posts as the label. This should be a number, so I give it a description. And the key is uh, the process variable. So that was new forum posts. And we can also say, for example, it's required. I could add a regular expression to make it numbers only, but I skip that for now. So let me save this file and say um, enter manually. Um, I will copy this name because I need that when I link to the form in the process model. And for this, we use the form key that you might already know. And this now gets a new description, which is Kamunda forms colon deployment. So I use deployment here to indicate that I want to use the form that is deployed in the same deployment to the engine. And then I just have to enter the name of the file. So let me save this process now. In the deployment, I can also add the form. So here we are, deploy everything to the engine and run it in cockpit. And somehow this ended up in the wrong window. There we go. So, and here you can see now it's waiting for this user task. And let me quickly open task list in a new tab where you see that there is a user task pending here with the form that I just created. So I can claim it. I can say, let's say this time, I don't know, it's just 12 completed. And if I go back to the process instance, we can see that this process has finished now in the lower path. And that's the demo.